Hello, people. Welcome back to an entry here in my series where I'm talking about the 30s and 40s horror films right now. And uh, this is pretty good for Halloween month, right? October. Now, this next film, we're back to Universal for a classic. It's a film that I should have really talked about probably early on in this series, but I wanted to leave it for a while because uh, some of you may know if you saw a video that I did, I went to see this film on the big screen with my nephew and uh, we had a good time seeing a double feature of Dracula and this film, the classic Frankenstein from 1931 on the big screen we saw it. So that's why I wanted to wait a while to get to this movie because I wanted to see it on the big screen. Um, what can I say? You know, you hit a film every once in a while where there's nothing you can say about it. It's a classic. Uh, all that needs to be said has been said, but what do I think of it? I think it's a great film. I think it's uh, better than Dracula by, by a margin. And this is the film that made Boris Karloff a star. He played the monster when Bela Lugosi decided that uh, he didn't want to put makeup on his face and do a non-speaking role. He thought playing a monster was kind of uh, something that wasn't really something he wanted to do. At least that's how the legend goes. I think in recent decades, I think maybe there were other reasons now that have been proven for Lugosi passing up the part. Originally, this movie was going to be directed by Robert Flory and, and starring, uh, I think you're going to have uh, Lugosi in that film as the monster. But Robert Flory wound up getting the boot and he was given the film Murders in the Room Morgue to do, which I'll talk about in another day. And him and Lugosi went over to do that film. Instead, this film went over to director James Whale. And uh, I have to say, James Whale is one of my favorite directors of all. Um, I think that he knew just how to put eerie, creepy horror touches with a little bit of comedy, you know. Uh, and this film is, for the most part, is pretty straightforward. I think it's pretty serious. It does have some well-needed, at times, comic relief. Uh, for example, there's an old baron, the, the, the father of the Dr. Frankenstein the character in this film, who every time he's on screen, I think he's a hoot. Uh, I love the old baron's uh, complaints and whining and rousing. I think he's just fantastic in here. I think he makes a lot of funny jokes and such. Um, now, actually, the movie itself, what can you say? Jack Pierce did the makeup. Of course, this is an iconic makeup even today, even if you don't know these films. You see... Uh, the Frankenstein monster with the flat head and the bolts. That's all Jack Pierce. And he, you know, he did so many of the universal horror monsters, the mummy, uh, the Wolfman, and on and on and on. Uh, fantastic makeup job here. Karloff had to wear a very heavy costume. Uh, and, you know, he worsened the back problem. He had back problems, Boris Karloff did. And um, he was in obscurity for, for, before this film was made, pretty much. He'd made something like 80 movies or something like that in the silent days, a lot of them, and nobody really knew who he was. Uh, he made a joke once saying, you know, he was in motion pictures for, like, many years. Nobody knew it but him, but he was in motion pictures. And then he came out and became an overnight sensation with this and became the king of horror, much as uh, uh, Elvis Presley's considered the king of rock and roll. Karloff is the king of horror. This is, has a lot of eeriness, creepiness, horror touches in there. I think it, it, it's really scary at times. Uh, when I was a child, uh, this is one of the first films I remember seeing on TV. I was probably six or seven years old when I first saw it on TV. And I vividly remember some of the monster scenes, uh, such as wrestling with Dr. Frankenstein with a torch, trying to fight him off with the torch. I remember that as a child. That was a pretty scary scene. We have Dwight Fry in here. Dwight Fry, who was Renfield. Uh, in Dracula, he plays the hunchback assistant, not Igor, <laughs> called Fritz. He plays pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I don't know, eerie in this film. Uh, Colin Clive plays Dr. Henry Frankenstein. And, uh, you know, he's really enthusiastic in here, really uh, over the top. We all know his crazy sequence when he makes the monster and shouts, it's alive, it's alive. For years, you people might remember, when I, when I was growing up and when I saw this on television, you know, for years the, uh, the film was cut. There were so many scenes that were excised from this movie. One of them was a sequence that's now restored, thankfully, but uh, for many years. It was a sequence after he creates the monster. Uh, he screams, now I know what it feels like to be God. 
and that was cut for many, many years. Also, most infamously, I'm sure, there's a sequence in here where the monster comes across a little girl playing with daisies by a lake, and he is very childlike, very innocent, and he sits down and plays with the girl. They both grab their flowers, and they throw them into the lake together, and then after a while, they run out of flowers, and he doesn't know what to do, so he throws her into the lake. Totally innocent move, totally shocked the monster is. Well, for years, that was cut out. And the interesting thing is Boris Karloff himself decided that he was the one who wanted this to be cut. He thought that the monster actually picking up the girl and throwing her into the water was too brutal. And he kind of insisted that that part be removed. But Boris, i got to say, he made a mistake because... Actually, what happened now is your mind, without that sequence intact, is left to imagine all types of things. Why did he drown the girl? Did the girl uh, anger him at some point? Did he do something terrible with the girl? Why would he just suddenly drown a girl? Uh, for years on TV as a child, I would always wonder that too when I saw it. Because I'd watch it on television, there'd be the sequence, and then all of a sudden he, he, he'd reach out for the girl like this and they'd cut to a commercial. And uh, when they came back, there was a sequence of the drowned girl being held limp, you know, as a limp rag doll, rag doll like form in her father's arms, you know, and as he does, uh, you know, depressingly comes through the village to present his daughter to the burgomaster. So, yeah, uh, this this was restored, I think, in 1987. I think 87 was the year that the footage with the girl was restored the way it should be, making the monster more innocent and childlike. It was an accident and that kind of thing. This movie is nothing like the Mary Shelley book. I've never been able to get through Mary Shelley's book. I'm sorry to you purists out there. I find it dull, very boring. Uh, some of the, I think Bram Stoker's Dracula is a more interesting read. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm glad that the monster went this way, I guess you could say. Uh, there he is, and uh, that's the iconic image of the monster right there. And May Clark, there's May Clark in there playing uh, Elizabeth, who, uh, you know, she's kind of a strong type of woman for the most part of the movie. And, you know, she's a little more tough than most, I would say, although she still plays the damsel in distress. We have Edward Van Sloan again. Edward Van Sloan played in Dracula before this as Van Helsing, the vampire hunter. Here he plays... Uh, professor who kind of uh, is a you know, your colleague, if you will, of, of Dr. Frankenstein. Um, I don't know what else to say about this. It's a classic. Uh, it delivers. But one thing I will say is that it moves quick. I mean, it's uh, probably 70 minutes long, around 70 minutes. Moves very quick. Uh, it's funny. It does not have any music during the film, but it doesn't matter. I think the lack of music actually accentuates it. Sometimes m music in a soundtrack can really bring a movie to life and sometimes in a movie like this it can actually make it better make it stronger without the music the stark silence in the back i think that that really works for this i to say the pacing is so good uh, I, I can't believe how quick it goes to me anyway um yeah um i think i pretty much covered everything there's not much i can say i enjoy this film it's a classic of course uh so far uh this is the first film in this series that i would give a full Four out of four stars to it. It's an excellent film. Four out of four. James Whale would eventually make a sequel to this film called The Bride of Frankenstein. And uh, I'll get to that eventually. A much different kind of film in a way than this approach. But uh, yeah, this is a must see, of course, needless to say. And I'll see you all in the next video.